Datology Coach Podcast. Hi, Sarah. Hey, friend. How's it going? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, so what's new? Yeah. yeah. Um, if you follow me on social media, you probably know that Luca crossed the Rainbow Bridge yesterday. Yeah. Um, and Sarah gave me the best news, which was that her soul cat, Kamiko, mm-hmm. one of her soul cats, Kamiko. I would say so far the soul cat. The soul cat. But it's still early. <laughs> mm-hmm. Also crossed the Rainbow Bridge on April 29th. Yeah, isn't that something? So we we were talking and and we think they're they're over there they're co-hosting a a, a paw p a w cast together. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Oh, you can't tell me otherwise. I won't hear it. I won't hear it. I won't believe anything. So yeah, no. she's she's a piece. Yeah. Um. The thing that I wanted to talk about because of this is something we talked about last night because Sarah checked in on me last night. You know. <clears throat> I've been talking about her health for months. So this was, this was an ongoing thing. And, um, last week it just took this really, it just took a bad turn, Yeah, which is what they say about pretty suddenly, really, you know, it was, and it wasn't, you know, it, it was, and it wasn't. Um, but by the weekend I knew this was, this was it. And that is what I had always said, which was, I'm ready. She's not. I'm waiting until she's ready and she'll tell me. Now, if you know anything about me and you know what an avoidant I am, you know, hmm. my mother died when I was very young. I, I, I just don't like goodbyes and I, because I never got yeah. to say goodbye to her. Yeah. And so um, having to say goodbye is, is very difficult for me. And yeah. <clears throat> I prefer, you know, when my, like when my sister got sick, I told everybody, you know, if this is going to go fast and I, thought I wondered aloud, am I thinking it's going to go fast because I want it to go fast because I need it to go fast Mm -hmm. because of that looming, that looming anticipatory grief. And that's because I I need it to be, I prefer it. But with Luca, you know, I've, I've known this is, this has been building, this has been coming. I was, I knew it was coming. I just didn't know when, Mm -hmm. um, I had a feeling like, well, I don't think, you know, it's going to be another, you know, I'll have another year with her, but I, but I wasn't sure. And it would have been very easy. And I, and, and people would have totally supported if I had decided to put her down when things really started to get bad for me, because uh, I was, I was exhausted. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't even know how to put it into words. I just... I, I I mean it was it was basically like round the clock. It was round the clock. It was round the clock yeah. care. Yeah. And you know, then I'm doing my other stuff as well. And mm-hmm. you know, I, I would some people were like, you have to think of your quality of life. The vet even said that. Yeah. A couple months about a month and a half ago or a month ago. And I said, no, because she's not ready. And I'm not gonna make that decision for her. Yeah but I'm going to see this through. And, and I, this didn't occur to me really until yesterday, how big of a, of a, a moment maybe for me to do this, for me to choose that anticipatory grief Mm -hmm. and that looming grief and to, to choose it. Yeah. And to learn and navigate it for me was such a huge step that's true that is and huge. i will you know it is huge and the first what, what's the other step that i learned the huge step I learned it from moon we learn these things from pets i'm just gonna say it yeah there are you know there are little yodas they're the ones who guide us through life and they, <laughs> they do they teach us a lot of very very different lessons they do and they do and moon taught me about you know i was so afraid i was so afraid of of losing her yeah like terrified. And I've told the story about how a couple nights before she died, I could, I could just see she was, you know, a little different. So I lifted her up and I put her on the bed and there was a, like my window the curtains were open just a little bit. And so there was this little bit of light on him and 
I was just like, you know, please don't go. I'm, I'm not ready yet. I'm not. And he put his paw on my shoulder. I'll never forget this. Mm-hmm. And he just rested it there. And he just looked at me. And I know he was saying, you, you, you're ready. You are ready yeah. for this. And even and that was devastating. And you remember that because it was just, I mean, this one, on it, I felt that for weeks. Yeah. That kind of searing pain. But he did, he, this thing that I had been so afraid of, I, I faced it and I got through it. And, you know, I think with Luca, I faced the anticipatory grief and the looming grief and, um, and I just put her first. Yeah. And I think that's why I walked away from, from the vets yesterday. Okay. You know, I, I felt like I did it. I did everything right. You know, I, I took it to the vets. I took it to the, you know, I got the medication. Uh, I stay, you know, I wouldn't go anywhere. I wouldn't leave her alone. Right. I, you know, I did everything right. Yeah. I gave her the care that she deserved. I gave her the time to be ready. And, and, and what I'm so grateful for, she didn't linger. She didn't yeah. linger because, yeah. you know, when I saw her on Friday and I'm like, oh, she looks like she's in pain. Right. Because she was, it was so hard for her to get that like squat to pee. And by Saturday with the heavy panting and I was like, nope, this is, this is it. Yeah. And to have to wait through the weekend until the, for my vet. Hmm. But then Monday morning went right in and uh, yeah, it was very, it was very peaceful. She was ready. I had to get her over there, which was, I'm, I'm like, I'm literally, it's, it's two blocks away. And right. it took me almost a half an hour because she was going two or three steps, stopping, going two or three, yeah. and she looked kind of confused. Plus, it was really hot, and she's panting. So I'm picking up this 70-pound dog, <laughs> and I'm walking down yeah. 84th Street yeah. with this 70-pound dog. And yeah. then I'd have to put her down, and she'd walk a little bit, and I'd have to pick yeah. her up. And then you were panting because it was hot and out. And then I'm <laughs> panting, and I'm crying. And, and people have just been like, what the what is going on with this person? Um. But it was quick. She was ready. She didn't seem afraid. And I'm just so thankful for that. She didn't seem confused yeah. as to what. That's what I was trying to like. What was it that, that stuck out to me? And it's she didn't seem confused about why she was there. She seemed to know. She seemed to well, like accept it. She, she was. Yeah, she was fine with it. Oh, wow. She was fine with it. Yeah. And that's. Isn't there that wasn't, something? Yeah. Because this yeah. is, I mean, well, everyone listening probably knows, but it. Luca was not a dog who was like excited about change or like <laughs> new new people, new places, new things. You know. Yeah, she was very. She so was for her to be not afraid is, yeah, yeah. that's huge. And the night before, she kept wanting to come up on the bed, and I had started. I tried to get her from the bed, but she was she was incontinent. She was peeing everywhere. Yeah. And so that the last time when we were going to bed, I was like, honey, I can't, I can't, I can't let you up. And so she, she laid down like right next to my bed, like right next to it mm-hmm. with her head, you know, facing me. And I said, she knows. She knows. Yeah. She's ready. This is her way. She was, she wants to be. <clears throat> yeah. She wanted to be close to me. Right. She knew. And she was. And she was. You know, I do, I think I, that, you know, I don't go there, but I, I'm kind of like, oh, should I have let her up in the bed? And You can't, you know. You can't do that. But I am just that. so grateful yeah. for, I'm grateful for the time I had with her. I'm grateful that she didn't suffer. I'm grateful how how easy it was. Um, And I'm relieved. You know, we yeah. don't talk about that. You know, when you're, and here's the thing, like we always talk about adults being a caregiver for a partner or for a, a, a parent. We when do. your pet yeah. is sick, it it's the same thing. It and really I won't, is. I won't hear differently. Yeah, it really is. The doctors is. and the medications and the cleanups and the diapers and the this and the having to clean them. And it, yeah. it's the same thing. And when it's over, I woke up this morning feeling like 
I had been hit by a bus. Right. Because I was carrying this overwhelming load of grief and fear and stress and, you know, because that was building because I knew it was coming and knew it was coming. Right. And I woke up this morning and, you know, like a, like a bus hit me, you know, so much I'm like, what, what do I do with myself? What yeah, that that feeling is really weird. It's very weird. The following morning when yeah. you your routine is interrupted. Mm-hmm. Yep. So she has crossed the bridge. She is in good hands with a lot of good people over there, including yeah. Kamiko. Mm-hmm. And she's she's still with me. I can't see her, but she's still with me. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So And you right. changed her life. She had such a good life. She changed mine. Yeah, I I like to think that she did. I did the best I could with what I had, you know. And when the time's right, I would like. Oh, she had a good life. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, she had nothing to worry about. Um, When the time's right, I'd like to adopt another senior. uh, I'd prefer a senior Chihuahua. Yeah. So if anyone hears of anything in New York, I know there's a couple people. Nan, Brad. I I know you guys have your you you have your contacts, a senior Chihuahua. You know, but um, not a barky one, right? But not a barky one. I prefer, yeah. but yeah. And then I got a text today from Sam and Brooks owners, and they were like, "Hey, oh. can you watch Sam? You know, for two weeks in June." I'm like, oh, "That's great. That's that's what I needed." Yeah. So yeah, little things. That is and that's, great. That is great. Little signs. Little signs from Luca. I know. I know what she's doing. I know she's looking out for me. Uh, Okay. So, uh, lest anyone think I've gone soft, (laughs) Sarah, (laughs) Um, let's get into an article that you sent me from the Huffington Post. Okay. And and we'll preface it by saying the author of this article is Emily McCombs, who used to write for Exo Jane. Yeah. What a throwback, huh? Yeah. And when I say she was a fucking train wreck but that's what that yeah. was the thing back then. Like, <laughs> i would say like 2012 13 2014 i think to like 2019 was woo train wreck central yeah it was a it was a, a lengthy period wasn't it it was it was um you know it was the best of times it was the worst of times it was right? sarah it was very dickensian <laughs> mm-hmm. i i look back on this period of the internet and i'm like oh I remember blogs. Blogs were cool. Right. Yeah. No blogs anymore. I kind of miss those. Um, but well, then like toward toward the end, it was like, oh, everybody's got a blog, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's well, but now everyone has a podcast. We're putting our every thought and feeling on the internet. Oh. Yeah. Yep. And that's, that brings us to Emily McCombs. Emily McCombs. Sarah, hit it. Tell us. Tell us what you got. So... <laughs> Um, I'm gonna have to. Are you crying? Up, right? Are you crying again? Well, yeah. There's no crying in baseball, Sarah. <laughs> I also have terrible allergies, so again, oh, okay. I, I right. you know, have to apologize for my okay. irritating voice. But um, Not yeah, it's a little of both. Sorry. Oh. Okay. I love you for that. Here's, I mean, if you're not crying, listen. I, <laughs> I don't. I don't know what's wrong with you. Um. Okay. <laughs> Here's the Emily McCombs headline. Why is every man on dating apps suddenly in therapy? It might not be a good thing. So basically, Emily McCombs begins this article by by sharing with us that uh, at the end of 2019, she was going through a bad breakup, which is very Emily very McCombs. Emily McCombs. <laughs> uh, that's kind of her brand. That's her thing. Yeah, she, she's you know she's she's kind of always like freshly broken up, right? Mm-hmm, Would you mm-hmm. say that's fair? Yes, she's she's kind of always wounded. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> very much so. That is wounded definitely and, brand. and a little. Uh, I'm not going to say resentful. I'm going to say guarded, skeptical, um, something more like that. Okay. A- anywho. Um, yeah, so bad breakup, very, very Emily McCombs coded. Mm-hmm. Um, during COVID lockdown, she gets back on the apps, as you do, 
and she notices that I mean as as the headline says like basically every guy has included just just the two words in therapy <laughs> as part of their their bio or their headline mm-hmm. um like all of them and she thought well surely they can't all be in therapy right and she also thought i'm not i'm not sure this is what we all had in mind right when we when we were making jokes like ha, 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 men will literally do anything but go to therapy mm-hmm. um because now they've overcorrected, and in therapy has become the new holding of fish she says right <laughs> um, oh that's okay. okay good for you emily mccombs i like that yeah so uh this past year there was a 21 percent increase in mentions of mental health and therapy on okcupid profiles wow that's just between February and July. Oh and God. then there was a 4% increase in August 2022 compared to August 2021. So around the same time, uh, and I, I didn't know this because I wasn't following, around the same time, the Bachelorette contestant, Zach Shalcross, uh, who would become the following season's Bachelor, got kudos for promoting therapy on the online dating show. During his first date, one-on-one with bachelorette uh rachel reccia Mm -hmm. i don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly sorry rachel uh he opened up about his mental health journey saying the main thing that really helped me in all this is i'm a huge proponent of therapy and then rachel could not agree more she's Mm -hmm. very excited he says that right on the surface this is all great news emily says especially (laughs) <laughs> when the idea that men should be attending therapy is infiltrating the bachelor um which is you know i haven't seen a lot of the bachelor but it's uh it's pretty regressive in terms of gender roles right mm. huh? um so emily goes on to say this the fight for gender equality has opened up new options for us socially professionally financially and otherwise women who date men are increasingly less willing to settle for men who are not willing to address what the Psychology Today article called the rise of lowly single men uh, with their skills deficits. Mm-hmm. So these include things like communication skills and the ability to engage in emo- emotional intimacy. Therapy is an obvious solution. And yet every time I saw in therapy prominently displayed on a man's dating profile, I couldn't help but feel a little suspicious uh don't you just picture her typing in front of a an open window with curtains right i couldn't help but wonder (laughs) smoking a cigarette yeah so were guys really evolving on this issue or was the trend a lot of empty virtue signaling from guys who had learned what women wanted to hear uh because here's some more statistics (laughs) from the the fellows at okcupid In response to an in-app matching question that reads, how do you feel about discussing mental health with your partner? 72% of men said it's important and that they're open to it. And men who said it's important and I'm open to it received 494% more matches and 74% more likes than men who said it's not important and I will not. (laughs) right right <laughs> so he go he went on to say over the past 90 days in the u.s men on okcupid who believe therapy is good for people or necessary received 86 percent more likes and 49 percent more matches compared to men who said it's not for them they also received 100 percent more likes than men who said they don't believe in therapy okay so but i think one of the keys here is that this is okcupid it and is. Okay, okay, Cupid is known for attracting a, a more. I met Don at Okay Cupid. I uh, met Kevin uh, on Okay Cupid. Oh, speaking of which, I I did send Don a text. Okay, well we'll get back to that. We'll get back to that. So <laughs> cliffhanger, <laughs> cliffhanger. Yeah, he he loved Luca. Luca loved him. Um, okay, Cupid is known for attracting like a more. A, it's it's less. There's less toxic masculinity on it. Yeah. That's more Bumble. 
<laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say match, but I guess match is more oh. like oh, God. live laugh love is... Christian kind of. Kind yes, of vibe, match right? is very quickly becoming e harmony. Mm. Okay. okay. Please continue with Emily's thoughts. Um. Well, so that was. I mean, that's basically it. I think we, you know, we see where she's going here. She says that the likes and matches could be an unexpected side effect or, of the therapy boom. Or <laughs> it could be that straight men are aware of the fact that saying they're in therapy um, adds value to them as a concept and raises the odds of successfully attracting women online. Or, because read that question again, What's what, what was the question on OK Cupid? So the question was, how do you feel about discussing mental health with your partner? And are you open to it? I think it's important. And see, okay, we're assuming, we're interpreting that that means that they are a proponent and advocate for mental health issues or for mental health in general. We don't know if that means I really, I I want to date a woman who has dealt with her trauma. Well, yeah, that's a different question. (laughs) Right? Like, yeah. So so the question, yeah, the question is how do you feel about discussing mental health with your partner? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then I guess there's there's two two follow up options, right? It's important or not, and you're open to it or not. So, right, but we're assuming that this mean that men are selecting it for for their it's a benevolent reason. Uh, we are. Yeah, there's all kinds of reasons you might think that it's important to discuss mental health. Yeah, because um, like he wants to know other than getting. just like you're a proponent of therapy. Right, yeah, because he wants to know what he's getting. <laughs> yeah, so well, that's a good that's a good point. Yeah, you know, we don't know how they are interpreting that question. Although, is that a is that a is that a malevolent reason you want to know what you're getting? I think that's. Fair. I think that's. I think that's fair. But however, but however, um, I think like that there are a lot of men out there who are, who don't really understand that most women have dealt with some kind of trauma, often sexual. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And they're just like, oh, I don't I don't want a woman who blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm sorry, bro. Uh, tell society because right. we've been traumatized. There and... definitely are men who will break up with women who've ever experienced a problem. Right. Because right. they simply have not. Right. <laughs> They've literally right. never done anything hard. Right. So they want... And I'm, I'm not joking. Yeah, I, I think they, they want to date a woman who's in therapy so that they don't have to handle it. They don't have to hear it. Mm, okay. Okay. So that could be. That, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So it could be that. It could be, oh, I, I want to know what I'm dealing with up front, right? It could be, I think this is going to attract more women, <laughs> or yes. I find this is attracting more women. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot well, yeah, I think, uh, but I think women are interpreting as, oh, they, they go to therapy or they believe in therapy. Well, lots of people believe in therapy. Very few go to it. But again, you know, the it's, other it's thing very is, expensive. a lot of therapists are uh, bad at their jobs. Yeah. Yep. So, like, being in therapy is not, I don't know, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't really tell you a whole lot about the person. Right. right. I, I think guys will lo- like the idea of dating a woman who's in therapy because they think, oh, good, she has someone to, like, unload all that stuff on so that That's I don't have to, because I'm not equipped to handle that. Oh, we could just do all the fun things. Right, right. And she can leave that other stuff. She'll be a cool girl with she'll me. Be a, she'll be a cool <laughs> girl with me, but an absolute train wreck with a therapist. Huh. Yeah. There's a lot of different ways that question could be interpreted. Huh. So, yeah. Uh, sorry, but moreover, Emily. I think, you know, we've we've talked about men weaponizing therapy speak. Mm-hmm. Yep. And we've talked about men weaponizing the notion of being in therapy uh, just against women mm-hmm. in general. Like, mm-hmm. we've seen multiple examples on TikTok. I don't remember that one guy's name, but like, remember that guy who was, who was um, very whiny? I let this narrow it down. Uh, very mid uh, was like going on and on about like being in therapy and like aftercare, and he's so thoughtful. And bottom line of all his videos is like, and how am I still single? Right. Yeah. 
that guy. Don just texted me back. Oh, what is what's he say? Well, we'll get into that later. Okay. Um, cool. Better. He wants to know if I want to talk later, and that's what I was afraid of. I was afraid of that because I'm like, oh, do I want to do that? I don't think well, I want to do that. You don't have to do that. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. We'll we'll figure it oh, out. All right, we'll, we'll um, get into that later, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sorry, okay. sidebar. That's um, right. You guys, tell me. Tell. How about this? Hmm. You guys tell me if I should set up a Zoom call with him for like over the weekend. Okay. Does it have to be Zoom? Well, that's what I have. I have. Well, we do. You typically did Skype, so Skype or Zoom. Hmm. Yeah, he's not. He's not a phone person. Doesn't like it. Okay. But you guys tell me yes or no. Leave it in the comments. Tell me. Um. All right. So wrap it up let's wrap this let's wrap this baby up that's it that's it <laughs> you can be um, up. yeah yeah i mean i i guess i i yeah to put a bow on it i would just say you know it's it's great if you see this in a man's profile uh-huh. um but it might not mean what you think it means right but i do i do think like i'm i'm sticking with it's it's great even though it might be disingenuous because at the very least at the very least this is a man who's attempting to understand what women want and need, even if he's going about it in a, like a gross, manipulative way. <laughs> now, here's a good question: How do we know if he's in therapy? Well, exactly. And I think a lot of that comes from. I, I th- what the, look, let's look at the self awareness, the introspection, the accountability. Yeah, it's uh, going to is- come out in some of the words he uses. I think. But also, it's gonna. It's not gonna come out on your dates, meaning. I hope not. He's not gonna yeah. be spilling all right. of this on your dates, right? He's gonna be talking to his therapist. I I hope. <laughs> I hope. I hope. <laughs> but yeah. Um. I, and here's the thing: this could be a, like a conversation that you want to have with somebody. Like, what yeah. do you? Th- what are your thoughts on mental health and therapy? And it's a great conversation and it's and it, it's interesting to talk about and you can you can tell a lot by how he responds. And he might even offer, "Oh, I think it's great. I go to therapy." Yeah. So, I don't think it's there's anything wrong with putting that out there. I think it's a very important conversation to have. I do too. Yeah. Because therapy teaches therapy teaches us how to communicate and how to manage conflict. Right. Which That's is very you have a decent therapist. Right. Right. So, okay. I guess uh, we're saying fuck that Best girl. Best of luck, Emily McCombs. I know it's hard out there. Godspeed. Godspeed, <laughs> Emily McCombs. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> this week on TikTok, a, I guess a pretty large influencer <laughs> was telling a story of how she and a friend went into a pizza shop and mm-hmm. she was flirting with the guy behind the counter and her friend was like, oh my God, how do you do that? That's... You know, you just made it look so easy. And she's like, oh, because flirting, you know, flirting's supposed to be fun and people forget that. And I guess she wrote her number down on a napkin and gave it to him. And she was like, oh my God, I wish, how were you able to do that? She's like, well, I mean, you know, I, I, it, it, I, it was just fun for me. I mean, I'm not going to date a guy who works at a pizza shop. And this okay. set off <laughs> a firestorm. Oh, so she was saying like, I can flirt without reservation because there's like nothing at stake really right like i don't i don't mean at it. at least i think at least I, and i think that was a key that i don't think she mentioned i don't think she was aware of it like that's yeah yeah you could do it because you know you would never date him and you didn't you wouldn't care if he rejected you uh so yeah. many people got upset and i'm gonna play for you uh, a tiktok by a creator named hello k He's right. The guy at the pizza shop probably does have a lot more job security than a lot of us because corporate America is in decline. Big tech is having layoffs constantly. We all see the videos and LinkedIn posts about people not being able to pay their bills. Like shit is rough out there. But you know what? People are always going to want to eat pizza. Pizza is delicious. It's also inexpensive. So yeah, the, the guy at the pizza shop probably is going to keep his job for a while. You know what else we need to stop doing is applying moral value to jobs because it's it's weird and it doesn't make sense because labor is labor is labor is labor. Your job isn't any better than mine because you sit at a desk sending an email and I have to work someone's home being their nanny. Like the person at the pizza shop is doing a job 
Just like you're doing your job, Hope, when you get on stage and tell mediocre jokes. <laughs> like, just like someone who goes to work and drives a, a garbage truck. Just like, like, all of these jobs are jobs. <laughs> He's right. The guy at the pizza shop probably does have a lot okay. more job security than a lot of us. Now, here's the thing. Now, I agree with everything she says. Yeah. But I'm going to call big fat bullshit on um, what, what, like, if whether or not she puts this into practice. Oh, okay. Are you saying that if someone who worked as a, you know, in waste management, are you saying you'd, you'd date him? Would you date somebody who's... who's I would. They'd probably make more than me. They well, true. I mean, at least true. in my county, I I right. know what they make. Right, <laughs> I right. Looked it up. <laughs> right, we know, but we know that stuff. But would the average woman do that? I don't know. I, See, I mean, I don't know. I I, I do okay. Because there's there's two things here, right? We're talking about mm-hmm. two things. Mm-hmm. We're talking about money, and we're talking about prestige. Yes, and status. Yes. Uh, and normally they go together, but not always. True. Like this, this is, you know, the occupations, this is like, it's a key time to talk about when they, they do not align, right? Mm-hmm. I worked prestigious jobs for many years. The, mm-hmm. They all paid garbage because I was mm-hmm. in higher ed. <laughs> right. Right. But I, I could tell anybody what my job was and they were like, ooh. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I'm no. <laughs> no, I assure you. <laughs> Take a step back. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh so there is a difference, right? There's also, you know, high paying jobs that are super easy. Um, True. I just True. read um that, you know, the job that should most obviously and and be re- most obviously be replaced by AI and should happen first is CEO. And that makes total sense to me. Okay. Say that again about the CEO. I'm sorry. I just read an article about how the job of CEO is like perfect to be replaced by AI. Oh, makes that, makes total sense because it's all about looking at patterns, right? Mm-hmm. And then making mm-hmm. decisions based on the patterns, mm-hmm. which AI could do better than we can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, that's great. But I want to get back to the topic. Oh, sorry. Which, I just wanted. Uh, I just wanted to name drop a high paying job that's easy. <laughs> right. So, CEO. What CEO. are you all for? What are you guys for, sir? What are you for? I just challenge this. I challenge this. I challenge this moralizing about. You know, we have to stop assigning value to job now i agree with that i agree with that you know and that was something that i always grew up with my father did not care when he would say go get a job sweeping in a in a restaurant he was serious yeah he was like that it's a job it pays you money like what are you talking about and I, and the funny thing is this that whole mindy lou who person um they used to, she'd get on live and she said, you know, she wanted to be a therapist, but, you know, she failed oh, at God. that. So so now all she does is take care of sick dogs. Is What's wrong? What? What? And then she would <laughs> make what? little comments like, why don't you go walk a dog? And I'm like, I, I can make $150. Don't throw it with a good time. <laughs> right? I can make $150 in an hour walking right? dogs. I'm very Wait. curious how she failed at being a therapist. There's sounds like there's a story there, but no, she anyway, said anyway. I failed at being a therapist. Oh, she said you failed at being yeah, a therapist. Yeah, she's like she failed at fa- being a therapist, and so that's why she uh, all she can do is take care of sick dogs. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but there was okay. always this. They were and, and this whole group of people would be like, maybe she should go walk a dog. Yeah. Like I, I make more money than you. I, I mean, yeah, I maybe you maybe you should walk a dog, <laughs> right? Like it's and great exercise. It's great dogs exercise. Dogs are fucking awesome. Dogs are awesome, <laughs> and you can make good money. What's the problem? You can yeah. Do other things around your schedule. Yeah. So I agree that there is this. There is that we do assign value to. We do assign value to dogs. Um, to dogs. <laughs> we sure do. <laughs> we sure do. We assign value to jobs. Uh, and I agree. Um, mm-hmm. but to quote Charlotte York, 
Mm-hmm. You're talking like we don't live in a um, a class system. Oh you, yeah. Right? Well, she says we live in a. She's doesn't she say like you're you're acting like we live in a classless, a classless society system. society and we don't <laughs> and, she, and we don't. She looks at the women painting her toenails. Yeah, and she's right. Like, all right, I don't. I, like when she says, I'm not going to, you know, uh, go on a date with someone who works in a pizza parlor. Okay. And the thing is, we do make assumptions about people who might work a blue collar job or uh, a, a, a a service job or a do- like some, I'm sure we do because we think, well, can they not do anything else? Or do they not want to do anything else? Yeah. But I don't know that I... I'm not, I'm not comfortable with saying to women, like, you know, how dare you? I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying <laughs> you to say tie here. yourself up a knot here. I don't know what I'm trying to say here other than all these people moralizing should shut the fuck up and put it into practice. And then I'll believe you. Okay. Put it into practice. Oh, okay. You want to go out with a garbage man? Go ahead. Go do it. Okay. Well, so the the reason I brought up the separation though, between money and prestige or status is mm-hmm. because I th- I think that they get conflated a lot in this discussion and I think mm-hmm. that's a mistake. So mm-hmm. for instance uh, when I was teaching K-12 not a prestigious job <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but paid better than higher ed. Yeah I believe it. Um, I I was I was like very set on not dating another teacher mm-hmm. and it wasn't, it didn't have anything to do with the pay. Right. Although the, I mean, the pay was not great, but as I said, it, it, it could be worse. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to date a teacher because I knew what teaching was like. Right. Mm-hmm. And I thought like, well, one of us should have a lower stress job. Mm-hmm. Right. That doesn't mm-hmm. require you to be on. Mm-hmm most of your waking hours right like you're bringing work home all the time like you're really you're working through summer like right i now i now i okay now i now i now i now i remember where i was going with this okay so a lot of people are saying you know that person who's working at the pizza pizza parlor uh maybe he's in law school maybe he's an actor Maybe he's a writer. Maybe he's all these other Maybe things. he owns the pizza parlor. <laughs> Maybe he owns the fucking place. It's all true. Yeah. But it's kind of like saying to women, you know, date his potential. Right. right. That's what's bothering me. Like, uh, why can this woman yeah. who's established, right? And I don't know if this, the original um, creator is established, but like, why should a woman who's established take a risk on somebody who's not well what's the risk dating somebody who maybe isn't uh financially or professionally stable yeah what's what's the risk really are you asking me that i am i'm i'm saying because then she's gonna have to do twice as much labor emotional and otherwise well unless unless that turns out to be the case in which case just just dump him right but like don't don't combine anything don't carry him along don't let him be your albatross right, right. also mm-hmm. like what if this is a second job for him right do you want to really want to date someone who's working parlor? two jobs i mean when are you gonna see him well i don't know see what i mean though but again like what if he's an actor right and he's mm-hmm. he's making some money at that but like He's trying to pay off his student loans. He's working at the pizza shop. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, this came up a few years ago when the guy who played Elvin on the Cosby show was seen. He was working at a Trader Joe's. Oh, yeah. And someone took his picture and, like, posted to the internet, like, oh, my God, what happened? Did he fall on hard times? Now, this is a Yale graduate, Okay. So he's interviewed. Now he's got his Yale hat on, but he's got his Trader Joe's name tag. Okay. Right. And he's like, hey, I have a family. Uh, I need benefits. I need health insurance. I was going to say, Trader Joe's is like known to be one of the better places to work. Is it? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, but he's like, you know, and, and he had a, he, it opened that dialogue of judging somebody for like where they work and, and assigning a value to right. it. And, and I'm, I, I, I want to make clear, I am very much against assigning a value to somebody based on their job. Mm -hmm. But I'm also very much against shaming women because they're like, no, this person, I don't know. I, like, I don't know where they're at in life. They don't, I, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel like the, maybe the takeaway here, the bottom line is like, we should be pressuring women to date men who are going to be a burden on them. Right. 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 But at the and same time, you, if you know where someone works, you know, literally one thing about them. That is not true. the whole story. True. I understand. I do. And, and I'm not saying, hey, you shouldn't give them. I'm not, I'm not saying that you shouldn't give them a chance. I think you should. It's the shaming yeah. that bothers well, me. Well, yeah, exactly. Right. That's if what bothers you, me. Like, okay. You know, so what if, if she doesn't know. want to? Right. So what if she doesn't want to? Yeah. Right. Just because men do it, men don't care. Men do that, not care. You know, right. Men don't care. That doesn't mean like, why shouldn't women care about that? Are we, we can't just land on, I support women's rights and wrongs. <laughs> well, that was the, that was, that was the, the caption. That was what was so funny of, of what I sent you. Uh, uh, I spite what sport or, or one of them. But that I, I mean, women's rights and wrongs. you know, if you want to be shallow <laughs> and mm -hmm. limit your options, it's certainly an option, right? Uh, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like it's, I, I, can we go back to the original thing? Like, what's tripping me up is like how shitty it is to disingenuinely flirt with someone. That's so mm -hmm. mean. It's mean. It's mean. Why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think she's making it clear she's not she's not the nicest person. Uh, I just don't like I just don't like this because this is a message and it's ex exclusively going to women, and you know that mm -hmm. they're talking to women, and that's what bothers me too. Like, so what? So what? She doesn't like just fucking leave her alone. She doesn't want to date him because he works in a pizza shop. Okay, yeah, like. <laughs> I'm just because, and the thing that gets me is all these people lecturing her. You're all full of shit. You're all full of shit. I bet, so, I bet this really boils down to whatever class you're born in, that's where you stay, <laughs> which is, which is pretty true, right? I mean, with the exception of some downward motion sometimes, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much where you, where you start is where you end. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to guess that the person who's like, flirting with with pizza guy as a joke right has probably never had to work like a summer job yeah or or any kind of service job at all for that matter like she probably just has had the luxury of viewing these people as subhuman mm -hmm. yeah uh and so I guess what I'm getting at is like maybe that's okay because maybe this sort of attitude just uh, is like what keeps us all in our own lanes and like maybe this is how we end up with people of the same class as us which is maybe. probably the only way to have an okay relationship right because if you have a relationship uh, like I'm talking cishet relationship as as the example Mm -hmm. where one person makes a ton of money and the other doesn't it doesn't work regardless of who it is like regardless of which gender it is it's mm -hmm. not gonna work mm -hmm. so that's depressing yeah that is depressing uh, i just i don't just stay in our lane though i hmm, i just don't want to sound like a snob i don't want to sound like because this isn't about it's really not a, is it about status or is it about I mean, don't you, th I don't know. I'm sounding like a snob. <laughs> I'm sounding like a snob. I just don't like the idea of like, so a woman says, I don't want to date somebody who like is a cashier somewhere. Yeah. You know, I, I don't. And not me personally. Like, I don't you think 
you know, let's say she's college educated and she works, you know, she makes six figures or even she, she makes high five figures, whatever. Like, let's say she's really got her life together. Someone who's a cashier probably, probably struggles. Probably. It's so, based so on what that's they're paid. interesting that you said that because like I was just over here thinking about how this is a uniquely American problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like elsewhere you talk about dating a cashier. All, all it means is again, you know literally one thing about them. They have a job as a cashier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Or they're yeah. a waiter or they're a yeah. bartender. Like yeah. well the, uh, elsewhere all of these roles make a living wage and it's mm-hmm. not an issue. Yeah. It doesn't limit your dating options. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I hate it here. <laughs> I I don't think I'm properly explaining. I just I I'm very torn on this. I'm 100 percent for not assigning someone's more like character value, right? Yeah. Not assigning someone's character value, right? But you know, ascertaining compatibility based on somebody's job is that different this is so it's interesting that that you are um i don't know the the way the way you're the way you're landing on this is interesting to me because it's related i think to previous conversations about women who uh were refusing to date men who didn't go to college Mm -hmm. and which is not to say like, oh, go to college, get a job better than whatever, because that's obviously no guarantee of anything at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are, but they, I think they're related, right? Because again, you, you're just, you're making an assumption about someone's class based on the one thing you know about them. Either okay. they didn't go to college or they work in a pizza shop. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm being a snob I mean, here, I guess. It's tough. It's tough to talk about because on the one hand, like, no, there's there's absolutely nothing wrong or shameful about wanting a partner who's financially stable or better. Right? Like right. no no one no one goes out and tries to date like right. oh, I but hope here's this the thing struggle. You know what it comes down to? No one ever says to men, Hey, just, you know, you don't know, give her a chance. No one oh, ever well, says no. that to them. No, they do not. But why do we always have to be the ones who are like, Oh, okay. This is what I mean. Why are we always the ones that have to oh yeah, you're right, you know, maybe I should just give Well, because we're chance. also the only ones who get the the threat of turning into a withered old crone. Oh, right. if you don't settle for that pizza, man, your vagina's gonna grow cobwebs. <laughs> or whatever. Or whatever. And then only your pets will love you. Yeah. That's not a bad thing, by the way. Exactly. <laughs> so But it's but it's uh but that's what it is, right? We're the only ones getting judged for judging right just mm-hmm. as we're the only ones threatened with being alone except that's kind of, i mean that's starting to not work because obviously women are realizing like that's no threat at all mm-hmm. but that's what it is right yeah i just don't like that because it's 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 just another way to tell women you're you're being this you're being that men are allowed to be this and that all the time no one gives a fuck yeah, and maybe it's okay. So you've 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 opened my eyes a little bit here. So maybe also it's like related to men feeling entitled to date women. Mm-hmm. Right, it's that pressure, like oh, give them a chance. Like you don't you don't know anything about them. I mean that is objectively true, right? But like again, why don't why don't we just get to say like no, nah, it's not for me. Right. Based well, on can't, whatever shallow criteria. Whatever shallow criteria we <laughs> fucking decide. Whatever. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. women are dismissed for their weight all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All the time. And we can't say, you know what? I, I'm I'm making a guess that we live in very, have very different, like, goals. 
Mm -hmm. um, or we might have different education levels or we might have whatever, whatever it is. Why can't we be shallow fucking too? Yeah. Well, we can. <laughs> we can. And I don't even I think it's shallow. support women's rights and wrongs. I don't even think it's shallow because women end up doing all the fucking work anyway. So it's like, listen, uh, we're going to be picking up the slack here. So we get to be shallow. We're also, we get, in some cases, giving you the kids. We get to be shallow. Because we're doing yeah. the fucking work and you're not. I mean, I feel like another another consideration here is is also, or I mean, I guess it's it's kind of it's one I've already mentioned, but like another point about just we stay in our own lane in terms of mm-hmm. class, which mm-hmm. we do. Yeah, is is just like is this a real issue? Not giving the pizza guy a chance because here's here's what I mean. Like when I was on dating apps. Or I guess sites. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I had to say no one like wildly inappropriate even contacted me. Mm-hmm. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Like everyone who contacted me was like someone that I thought was like a reasonable prospect. Mm-hmm. So aside from this, like flirty banter at the pizza parlor like are we even really encountering people that far out of our league that this is like a problem i don't think we are i'm trying to think because like where because i mean where and yet, but, where you but yet, hang here, out here here here's an example okay women love dating bartenders why because bartenders are thought of as like they can get any woman they can and he chose me Okay. Right? They don't have any problem dating a bartender. Well, except except Miranda did, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were just about to segue into that. Uh, we were, yeah, Miranda did. I mean, yeah, maybe they don't have a problem dating a bartender in their 20s when they're dating to date. Mm-hmm. Right? But if you're, yeah, once, once it was time to settle down, Miranda yeah. suddenly had a problem with Steve being a bartender. Yeah. And here's the thing. We're going to stop here and we're going to tease you a little bit uh, because we're going to do a bonus episode for um, episodes three and four yeah. of Sex in the City. And we'll, But we're going to talk help about but wonder. I couldn't help but wonder what that episode's going to be like. <laughs> all right. Follow us on all the things, but follow us on Instagram, Datology Pod. Follow me on Instagram, please. The Kristen M, T H E C H R I S T A N M. Follow my YouTube channel because I'm going to do some lives where we like have live sessions where you can log in and I'll be talking and you you can ask questions and I post videos and I do a lot of recaps of um, like Sex in the City. I might even start doing girls, although woof that Marnie seems really insufferable and I don't know if I can handle that much insufferability in one th- in a thirty minute period. Man, uh, I don't. I would. I mean, you've never watched girls, right? Oof, no. You're just talking about clips. So I, I would be interested to see if that ends up being who you find insufferable. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, they all seem insufferable, to be honest. Uh, okay, <laughs> but follow me on you, at, at YouTube, youtube.com slash at datologycoach. Send your questions to hello at datologycoach or go to datologycoach.com and click ask a question. Follow me on TikTok at datologycoach and at my character analysis. That's it. That's all we got. Make sure to uh, sign up for Patreon to listen to the bonus episode. There are different tiers. Um, We've adjusted the tiers a little bit. $3 will get you one bonus episode a month. $5 will get you two. $7 will get you three. The first three episodes of the month are free. The last episode of the month is exclusive, and it's for Patreon members only. Go to patreon.com slash datologycoach and become a member and join our community. Bog Vays, Bog Witches. Bog Warlocks. Value. We support your rights. We support your your rights and your wrongs. (laughs) (laughs) Goodbye. Bye.